It would appear that the president, Donald J. Trump, has finally taken my advice, which was also taken by Tucker Carlson last night. I saw his interview. My wife had actually watched that and asked me to tune it in. I generally don't watch Fox News in the evening. But Tucker was directly on point, and he was echoing the same thing that I am saying and have been saying for a long time, is the president needs to take control over these maniacs that are out there, radical leftists, destroying everything in sight, not just statues, but people's businesses, harming them, maiming them, killing them. And the president, at least, later issued an executive order, at least it would appear so, that he's ordering the federal police in and around the White House and other federal places to arrest these individuals and to throw them in jail. We'll see if that actually happens. To me, frankly, I'm still somewhat skeptical because this has been going on for quite a while now. These so-called protesters, they're not protesters, they're communist, socialist, revolutionaries, they're Bolsheviks, are on camera. They've been photographed. They're not even wearing masks, most of them. And the Attorney General of the United States, who I call that overstuffed blowhard, blowhard bill, or maybe we should call him Puxitani Bill, like the groundhog in Pennsylvania that sticks itself back into the hole every February 2nd, for the most part. He knows who's involved here. He could have arrested these people for at least what was going on on federal land. So let's see what happens. But it's time that the president take control because it's spiraling out of control. And we have right now what is, in effect, a leftist revolution against this country. And thus far, people on the right have been restrained and they've held themselves back and they're not doing a tit for tat. And that's good. But this is going to evolve into a very violent confrontation. I don't want to see that unless the president intervenes directly. Now, a few weeks ago, I had a conversation with my friend Alan Keyes, former U.N. ambassador, former presidential candidate on two occasions. He also ran for the Senate in Illinois against Barack Obama. And Alan pointed out to me that the president has the authority under his emergency powers to actually take control of the local police. He doesn't have to go to the National Guard. He doesn't have to go to the military. He can just simply order the police to enforce the law. And forget about that hack, leftist, ridiculous, stupid mayor in Washington, D.C., Muriel Bowser, who had painted all over the streets Black Lives Matter on 16th Street, right in front of the White House, and termed it Black Lives Matter Plaza. Black Lives Matter is an evil group, by and large. They want to overthrow this country. They're basically a bunch of black separatists that think that they're superior to other people in this country. They're not far off from Louis Farrakhan of the Nation Islam, or Al Sharpton, of his vigilante con man fraudster group. This is something which I'm glad to see people are starting to talk out about Black Lives Matter because they've been deified in the last several weeks. So I want to congratulate the president for taking my advice and also taking the advice of Tucker Carlson, because if something is not done, these Ultra-leftists will someday, these radicals, be in front of your house trying to take control of your house, your cars, and everything you own. That's where we're headed here. It's a socialist, communist, Bolshevik attempt to take control of this country, and so far, it's succeeding. Now, one other thing I want to keep in mind is one thing that Tucker said that you know continues to, I find, more than troubling. He equated the fact that if you stuck your neck out, as opposed to Black Lives Matter and these other people, that you would be stoned. He was returning to Roger Stone. He has been the shill for Roger Stone from day one, and he's the one who was acting as a surrogate, who helped smear the judge, which certainly didn't even help St- Stone in that particular case, not that she's unbiased, but it was really dumb. And to continue running interference for Stone is a big mistake, and this is what people need to understand. I sat at that trial for two weeks. I've said this before on behalf of Dr. Jerome Corsi, who was subpoenaed by both Stone's lawyers and by the government to testify. He would have testified truthfully, truthfully if he had been called, but he wasn't. Stone didn't call any witnesses. He didn't get up on the stand himself. This guy who likes to shoot his mouth off and insult people and threaten people, like Randy Credico, another witness, didn't even take the stand. 
So for him to claim that he was wrongly convicted is complete crap. And he doesn't want a new trial. He wants a pardon. But if the president considers a pardon, the president will be making a very big mistake. First of all, Stone's not going to do that much time in prison if that's where he goes. Probably do about a year. And frankly, it's good for him to be taught a lesson that you can't lie, you can't threaten witnesses, and you can't obstruct, obstruct justice. And as an example for everybody else, and I don't care who you are. I don't care if Comey's been let go and the rest of them by this blowhard attorney general bar. The fact is the law needs to be enforced. But here's the bottom line. He's now claiming, and if you can believe a word that he says, you live on another planet, it'll be a death sentence if he goes to prison. Well, the prisons have taken precautions at this point. In fact, they delayed him being admitted uh, and incarcerated. So that's hardly an issue. And the president would be making a mistake. He'd be risking his own reelection if he pardons Stone, particularly at this time when there's a lot of controversy over the firing of a U.S. attorney in New York by the Justice Department, which claimed that it was of his direction. And there's nothing wrong, by the way, with firing U.S. attorneys. They serve at the political pleasure of the president. And also the whole Flynn matter, where the Trump Justice Department correctly is seeking to have that plea agreement and the potential conviction have the whole matter dismissed. So, Mr. President, one other piece of advice. If you want to be reelected because you need voters who are independents, you need voters who believe in law and order, and this is what you're professing right now with regard to these rabid leftists, you cannot pardon Roger Stone. And anything that comes out of Roger's mouth, and I know because I've dealt with him in the past, is frankly not to be believed. He's not going to serve a death sentence. So that's my message for today. Please share this podcast. Go to freedomwatchusa.org. Sign up for our citizens class action against the communist Chinese. Uh, we also filed just yesterday a new lawsuit against Gavin Newsom over these draconian orders, not just the stay-at-home orders, which are in effect forced imprisonment, but also having to wear masks, which can be counterproductive health-wise, doesn't allow you to develop immunity, causes you to breathe unclean air, carbon monoxide, and also, you know, what's coming down the pike with forced vaccinations, which can also be extremely dangerous in certain circumstances. So go to freedomwatchusa.org, sign up for our Citizens Clan Act class action against the communist Chinese, see if you qualify Share this podcast. You can find it on iTunes, Spotify, Roku, Amazon Fire, Facebook, Twitter, freedomwatchusa.org, and radioamerica.com. And I thank Radio America again, as I always do, for allowing me to tell the truth as I see it. God bless you. God save America. He's with us. God is with us. We will prevail in the end, but it's going to be hard days ahead, and we must fight, and we must defend ourselves peacefully and legally. I'll be back tomorrow with another special podcast. Until then, thank you for listening to me.